morning Traniacs. We're in Kona. We're here. This is day one and we are about to just go right over there and do a walk through the course with the man, six-time champion Dave Scott. Okay, so we're here with Dave Scott. For those of the, say, six people that don't know who you are, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, well, we were just talking here on the pier, Taryn, and this is my 38th year that I've been here to Ironman. Well, I'm older. I'm older than you, and older than probably a lot of your viewers. Uh, I did Ironman in 1980. It was the third year of the event, and it was in Oahu. And since then, 81, it's been over here on the big island. So. We are here Iron Man week, and it's a crazy week just coming down here today, but it's uh, always great energy. Yeah, it's fantastic. Six-time winner here, so the man, literally the man is your, your nickname, knows the course. So let's just give people kind of a um, bit of an uh, uh, overlay of what they can expect on race day. Let's talk about the swim for the people that, let's say they're a mid-pack swimmer like that, that really meaty part of the swim, that 130, ish kind of swim uh, this is one of the few remaining mass starts that they can experience in the world with Ironman going more towards the rolling starts how do people approach this swim aggressively 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 how so well I think a lot of people uh, everyone's got to have a comfort zone so when they span out it's fairly narrow here in the uh, in the harbor and uh, you've got about 125 meters right to left so you can be at next to the pier the pier is a direct line but if you're a little apprehensive and ambivalent about the start and elbows going like that uh, better to be on the left side and then kind of angle in the swell has a tendency to kick everyone uh, out to sea so even when you watch the pros you'll see kind of a banana arc they're going out to sea and then they they have to correct so I think for uh, the folks that are here and they're the 130 people as you described look at that first buoy uh, it's about 300 meters offshore and hit that right on the tee so okay. whether you're on left side right side go right at that first buoy and don't do the banana uh, uh, one other thing that happens with a lot of the newbies you're surrounded by people because there's a lot of folks out there and as you said it's not the rolling start it's a mass start like the good old days that's what we like to see uh, most people have a tendency to be a little overzealous, they're anxious at the start obviously, and they have a tendency to hold their breath. And even when they turn their head to the side, you can see people kind of take a quick inhale, it's not really an inhale, and they're not exhaling, so you can get 100 meters into the swim and realize you're totally hypoxic and panicky. So I always tell people, the blue sky, look up at the sky, not those orange hats that are moving around. Take slow, methodical breaths and see your exhale. The water's clear and you can blow out of your nose and your mouth. So when people do that at the outset, it has a, a calming mm. uh, feeling and, and that's what you want. Okay, so let's talk about the bike now, Dave. Uh, there are all these different sections that everyone talks about being so legendary for being difficult to climb up to Javi. The, the open sections where the wind's just howling off of the ocean, that last 30K in any Ironman is difficult. Is there a section that is the most difficult uh, emotionally? And what can athletes expect to be going through when they go through that section? Yeah, good, good question, a broad question. I mean, the, the bike course has lots of challenging spots. I have a series that's out that kind of goes over those multiple spots. Uh, I always tell people, and even the pros, and, and I'll use Sebastian Keenly as a good example. He's won the race here, amazing cyclist. He caught the lead pack at 30 miles on his victory. In other words, he had to make up that time, slowly made it up, and then blew, blew everyone away. He had his best swim ever a couple years ago, and in the first 4.8 miles, uh, about 8 kilometers, here in town, it climbs up a lot, and he smashed it, and certainly was well above his VO2 on that. I see a lot of amateurs doing that. It's like they're doing a flat-out time trial, and it happens to be you know a couple K long. So they get to the bottom of Polani Hill in town, and there's droves of people there, and they're just going at a suicidal pace, which is just nonsense. So they get to the top of Polani Hill, and I think a lot of them have gone too hard. So they've got to back off. So that, that's really one, and that's just at the outset that they need to kind of temper that down a bit. Um, the, the second most difficult part is uh, as they get at the base of the hobby climb, and it's 12K, seven miles, you see the seven mile sign, and that first mile is the steepest. 
and when you see that, quite often you have a good headwind, a, a big headwind. It can be anywhere between 15 miles to 40 miles an hour. And a lot of people go, oh my gosh, you know, where are my legs? That's number two. I know you only said one, but we've got a lot of time. Uh, the, th the third one is that Kauai High coming back. And Kauai is at the sea, and you, you climb up uh, a, a, about 1,800 meters, maybe not quite that far, to the Queen K, the main highway. You have 60K to go. You said 30K. That last 60K, people get mentally socked. And we see an attrition with the men pros, the women pros, and all the way through the amateurs. Uh, with 60K to go, 120K into it, a lot of them are just spent. Interesting. So how do they, how do they prepare for that? Is it nutrition like you mentioned? Uh, I didn't mention nutrition. You just did. You did. I did. I oh, oh yeah. really? I, I said nutrition. I don't know if I said nutrition, Taryn, but I think it's. A, We're gonna go back to the it's tape. It's nutrition. <laughs> nutrition can be a a, a a big issue because people have a tendency to eat too much too soon. It's a long day, they think Kauai, the conditions are tough, so therefore as they get out of T2, I've got to gobble down a thousand calories. And I've, and I've heard people do this and see them do this, and they're able to get through good, better part of the, the, the cycling leg, and they get to the run, they've got huge GI problems. And that kind of permeates all the different levels, and I hear it with the pros as well. Whatever you do in training, try to match that here. Uh, uh, similar conditions, obviously this is the humidity and heat. You may need 20% more, but you cannot come out of, the, of uh, T1 and think you can win the race by taking in more nutrition. That, that's a huge mistake. So okay. that clarify nutrition? Well, you didn't ever say it. Actually. <laughs> Let's get into the run. Let's assume everyone's done training. They've got the volume in their legs. Almost everyone is expected to walk at some point. A lot of the, the winners year to year will even walk. But how can the average age grouper who's done the right training limit the damage that happens in that last half of the marathon? Well, first off, I don't agree with your statement about getting the Ooh. volume in your legs. Is this so, payback because of the nutrition no, crack no, no, I made? No, not really. I, I'm supposed to be the pseudo expert, so you're, you're, you're the color. The color. Uh, yeah, the I'm color. The, I'm the foil. You're the, you're the color. I think a lot of people have a tendency to do too much volume because it, it affects really the, what's called the energy organelle, the mitochondria. So when people keep doing volume, 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 particularly as they get close, there's actually a deterioration in their ATP and mitochondria. That's kind of technical. So early on in the year, when the pace is slower because their fitness isn't there, there's nothing wrong with doing volume, but you can't do it week to week to week, which has been the model for a long time. That is a mistake. So now that I've corrected on that, okay. Taryn, regardless of that, if they allow themselves to, re to rest a little bit in the last three weeks and keep their light training program, they should be ready to go. Um, the, the run, to minimize downtime, you have to anticipate the aid stations. And you do, do you need aid? and they're spaced out every mile. And when you come to that aid station, have a plan. I think a lot of people are chaotic when they go through it and they end up walking. And you can eat up a minute to a minute and a half at every aid station times 24 or 25. And it's a huge amount of time. So I always tell people, keep shuffling. Uh, even in the old days when we had the Boy Scouts out here and you're just kind of saying, oh my gosh, hand me that, that fluid, okay? I would always point to them. And I'd, I'd point to him and say, okay, come with me, come with me, run with me, run with me, run with me. They get it. So they'll come out. And I, and I think, you know, the amateurs, the pros, you don't have to hit them with a baton over their head. But you can tell them, hey, move with me. I'd like you to give me that aid. And it works. And I have athletes that we're talking about that... Uh, we we know we've talked about this exactly. Minimize that time in the transition areas. Keep your legs moving, and if you feel like you're having to walk, start your arms again because your arms will dictate or mandate the leg speed. Yeah, very interesting stuff. So, if you want to get the entire play-by-play -play of the entire course, Dave has that on his channel. How many videos are on that? Uh, well, we're leaking them out uh, slowly, but I also have a series that's out. So. Um, we just started this Dave Scott Tri Club, and uh, we have a lot of videos on that. And I shot some other ones for Hoka about the Kona course, but they have applications to all Ironman races. Uh, even though there's some particulars, as you asked me here, I think when people go into an Ironman race, it, it's an Ironman race. So what do you think about? So I have swim tips, I have running tips, I have cycling tips, and then go to DaveScottTriClub.com, uh, and they can find all about my club.
Perfect. We'll link to everything over here in the side in the description below. Thank you very much, Dave. Okay, Taryn, pleasure. Yeah. Nice chatting with you. Yeah. All right. If you My need pleasure. some more tips, if you need some more tips, just holler. You know those long days. You and already stuff. corrected me on the swim. Well, you're pretty good on land, but you need, <laughs> I need I need to see in the water over here and see what a disaster you look like. No, I'm just kidding.